Yo! It's your boy, Cardboard Moses, with you. Welcome. Time to do another break, eBay style this time. We're going to be doing 1718 Donruss Basketball Half Case Break number 7. Uh, that's 10 boxes, y'all. I hope you got your popcorn ready, because uh, it's going to take about an hour and a half, eBay. It's going to take some time. Lots and lots of cards in this stuff. Uh, last half case I did, pretty good. A Jason Tatum RPA and a Markel Fultz. The one and three pick in the same half case, mm, that's pretty good. Uh, so let's see if we can build on that, make this a little bit better. Good luck, y'all. All right. And Abraham, good luck, everybody. Thank you. I believe I can fly. All right. Let's open this up. Now it's 10 boxes. Uh, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to do this half. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, Swingin' Athletics, if there's anything you need, let me know. You know, I don't know, maybe maybe you want to buy a briefcase or something. I got you. Put this stuff away here. Think about it every night and day. Spray my wings and fly away. All right. Uh, Gregory, yes, I'm doing that tonight at uh, at eleven, my man. I apologize. I realize the description. Uh. Underneath the listing is uh, is not correct. It says Friday the 17th of November. Um, that's a mistake. You know, we are human. We make it from time to time. Uh, so I do appreciate you uh, coming in and, and asking me about it. You know, and if you did send me a message on eBay, um, I'm sorry I have not responded to you. Because, as you can see, I do run a live show. Uh, so it's a bit difficult to, you know run the live show and respond to messages in a timely fashion uh so i do appreciate you coming into the chat and asking about it my man yeah right exactly i'll just hop in the time machine and watch man there you go i thought i was the only one with the delorean well listen make sure you get up early for that one josh as far as the uh, the 55 incher, sounds good, Gregory. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you being cool about it. Because some of those eBay messages get a little intense. But yeah, get your popcorn ready, guys, because we're gonna be here for a little while. We're gonna be here for a little while. Oh, that's well. You know, my next suggestion was gonna be Josh was to uh, hit up Cyber Monday. Uh, I feel like there's better deals on Monday than on Black Friday. Alright, so for this, because it takes so long, and, uh, you know, we do have a good amount of people here, I am gonna, I'm pretty much gonna breeze through this thing, 
I'll top load any one of ones and autographs and things like that. Uh, but any numbered cards, I'm not even gonna sleeve right now because uh, it just it takes way too much time. And I know you guys would much rather uh, get to the breaks than just see me sleeve a bunch of you know cards numbered to two ninety nine and whatnot. By the way, Veteran Base does not ship in this product. So I will also be doing that. I'll be sorting through it as I go. Uh, separating the rookies and inserts from the Veteran Base. Try to make this thing a little bit faster. Uh, it's what, nine, I'm going to call it 9.30, 9.28. Let's see just how long it takes me to do this. You know, I'm going through a half case in about an hour and a half. I'm trying to cut that down. That just takes way too long. So, good luck, guys. See, starting us off right there. Alfred Payton to $2.99 for the Magic. Just going to put that to the side. Got the rookies. Veteran base doesn't ship, but inserts and rookies do. <clears throat> and I throw the Ben Simmons in there, of course. You know, technically he's a rookie, uh, but they have they you know they don't state so in the uh, actual cards. He doesn't have any rated rookies or anything like that. Dude, Cyber Monday is is where I get my deals. You know, George Hill with a two color patch for the Kings. That's because you know I, I don't like sitting uh, sitting or standing in line for hours. Just so I have the opportunity to get something. You know, it's not even like a guarantee that I'm going to get anything. Um, so I, I'd much rather do Cyber Monday because, you know, I'll just do it from the comfort of my home, you know. And I don't have to worry about knocking some fool out because, you know, because they stepped on my J's. Because, you know, they're all up in my personal space. Where are you putting that, that big ass TV anyway, Josh? Are you putting that thing up on uh, in the man cave? Show of hands, how many of you guys actually have like a man cave? All right, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that. The answers are resounding yes. Better question, how many of you guys have a man cave that your significant other is aware of? There you go, Clippers, Sendarius, Thornwell. With the auto for you. Is it basic rah rah? Put the autos here. Says the man with a man cave. Rah rah. You know you got a man cave, dog. You know you got a man cave. You can sit there and call it whatever you want. But it's a man cave. Damien Dotson of the Knicks to 99. Put that to the side. Listen, I could be married with children. I'm still going to rock that man cave. Al Horford to 199 for the Celtics there. You know, and I'm a nerd, so my my the deals I'm looking for the man cave are like video games and things of that nature. Like I have a 42 inch TV in, in my room slash man cave, and that's it's it just it's big because I don't have that big of a room. So well, I was gonna ask you, Josh, is 50 if is 50 inches necessary? I mean. Because then you, you got to look into, well, then again, I'm a gamer. So I look into other things like refresh rate. And, you know, is it 1080p or what? I, I does my research. I does my research. Well, how about this, Rara? 
instead of calling it a man, a man cave, how about you just call it a lair? It sounds a lot more baller. Well, listen, Jason. I mean, Josh. I I, I don't know, man. You know, I know I know people that game, but they you know they don't even pay attention to uh you know little deets like that. As far as the refresh rate and all that other stuff. All right, so we have one box down and nine more to go. Is it just me or is it hot in here? I'm going to go turn that AC down. And I'm back. I'm considering picking up Shadow of War. Uh on on Friday but it really depends on what other uh, games are gonna be on sale because if I if I see like 2k or FIFA on sale I gotta pick those up I just have to more so FIFA like I, I'm still kind of on strike with 2k this rate I might be done in like 40 minutes hoping for some nuggets That's what I'm talking about. You gotta put you gotta put those requests in the universe early. I mean, there's no guarantee that I'm gonna hit it for you, but you know, putting it onto the universe kind of does increase your chances. Studies show it increases your chances by like 10%. What studies are those? The random studies I do in my head. What's going on in the sports world right now? Aside from the Braves fucking up. I know the Celtics won last night. whoop de doo They've been, they've been crushing it. How many wins in a row is it now? Like 15? Kyrie Irving playing at, at an MVP level. And who thought Jason Tatum was gonna be this good this you know this soon? That is true, the Bucks did beat the Dolphins. I didn't watch the game, but uh you know Jason and I were chatting for a little bit. And he was telling me it was more so of you know who wants to lose this game more. It turns out the Dolphins wanna lose the game more. Oh, super smart. He's seen the writing on the wall. But did you expect him to be this good this early, though? Jalen Brown is hella athletic. I, I, I like Jalen Brown last year. I don't like the haircut. You know, kind of looks like a jackass. But the kid is balling, so you could you could rock whatever hairdo you want, big fella. I don't think it's as ridiculous as uh, Jeremy Lin's mohawk uh, a few seasons ago. Porzingis. Somebody needs to come up with a better nickname for Porzingis. The Unicorn. That does not strike fear into people. Kyle Lowry to 299 for the Raptors. Porzingis could really use a better nickname. Oh, for sure. Gordon Hayward going down just accelerated uh, Jalen and Tatum's, you know, uh, 
how, what's the word I'm looking for? Development. My card's backwards, upside down, so. I just figured it was an auto. You know, whenever the cards are backwards or upside down, they're either numbered or something, you know? Well, when he comes back, first of all, I feel like because of his injury, he won't be doing too much moving. I think he'll just be a spot-up shooter for a bit, you know, and that'll that'll get him into the offense real quick. My concern is how is he going to be defensively with the lateral movement and all that stuff? Dude, Jeremy Lin with a bow cut would be uh, kind of scary. For the Bucks, Jabari Parker. There you go. It's a nice hit. Not numbered, though. Not to mention, a lot of people aren't talking about it either. But Brad Stevens is a really good coach, man. Mike Conley of the Grizzlies. Yeah, even next year, bro, like, they won't be defending champs. Uh, they won't even get out of the East because... Uh, you're not gonna beat LeBron four times. You just you're just not gonna do it. You know, unless LeBron's team is severely injured, you're just not gonna beat him four times. You know, Celtics are great, but uh they will not make it to the NBA Finals this year. Uh I repeat, they will not make the NBA Finals this year. If I was matter of, if I was to predict the Eastern Conference Finals, it would be Cleveland and then possibly Boston. Uh, but I got Cleveland winning that series in seven. You know, I felt like LeBron kind of committed career suicide by going back to Cleveland. To 49, Chris Middleton of the Bucks. That's pretty low number. Got to put a sleeve on that. I felt like he should have stayed in Miami. But of course I'm going to feel that way. You think the Cavs are going to implode later this year? I think they're imploding now, man. Like, seriously. Mike Conley with a relic for the Grizzlies. I think they're imploding now. You know, even D. Wade. D. Wade is talking a little crazy. LaMarcus Aldridge to 189 for the Spurs. I really, I really want the Heat to get it together, though. We've been playing, playing crappy so far. Oh, listen, a team can implode and still make it to the finals. I mean, we're talking about the East here. You know? You think Kyrie's going to beat the Cavs? I don't know, man. That team is really young. So while Kyrie may have the experience... And they have a few veterans out there, Al Horford. But I still feel like they're, they're too young, man. Kyrie may be determined, but I'll say this. If, if they end up meeting in the finals, okay, and both teams are, are, you know, the way they are now. They're relatively healthy, whatever. LeBron is going to guard Kyrie Irving. And LeBron is going to shut down Kyrie Irving. Oh, the Cavs are, Cavs are ancient. But, you know, there's something to be said about that experience, man. You know, those kids are going to be young. And they're going to be looking to Kyrie Irving to lead them. And uh, I hate to say this, but Kyrie Irving did not win anything until LeBron got back to Cleveland. You know, when, when Kyrie was running that team... They never made the playoffs. They 
Matter of fact, they didn't have a single winning season with Kyrie being the man in Cleveland. Now, there's a lot to be said there. The teams are crap. They didn't build the teams around Kyrie. Blah, 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 blah. This is all true. But you and I both know basketball is all about matchups. And there is not a single worse matchup in the NBA than LeBron James. The man can literally defend four positions, defend it well, and he's going to attack you on the offensive side of the ball. Kyrie Irving cannot. Like, Kyrie Irving can defend when he feels like it, but he can defend two positions tops. If LeBron felt like it, LeBron would shut down Kyrie Irving. That's only in Miami. He only cramps in Miami, Ra Ra. Oh, wait, my bad. Or, or San Antonio. Mind you, I don't even like the Cavs. I, I, I would actually root for the Celtics in that uh, scenario if it was Celtics Cavs in a series. I just, I just, I don't, I don't see, I don't see Kyrie Irving getting them over the hump, man. They really would need Gordon Hayward at that, at that juncture. But then again, who knows? What if Jalen Brown develops into like an all-star already this year? You know what I mean? A lot of stuff can happen. Injuries, blah, blah, blah. That's what makes basketball fun, man. Just when you think you know something, Boom. And who, you know what? Be on the lookout for the heat, too. Be on the lookout for the heat. We're playing a little crappy now. But we can turn it on, baby. And we were the hottest team in the league last year. Nobody wanted to see us in the playoffs. The way we were playing. Basketball is fun. Basketball is hella fun. It's a fast-paced game. And uh, what I like the most about it is that although it is a team sport, one player could really make the difference. Whereas in baseball and football, it's damn near impossible for one player to have that big of an impact. That, and uh, I also like to see dunks. That is uh, pretty electrifying. You know, throwing alley-oops, you know, jumping 50 feet in the air and catching that thing, slamming it down. What? Porzingis to 199 for the Knicks. LeBron has been playing a lot of minutes, though. That's going to catch up to him at some point. Like, he's human. Like, that's that's just got to happen. I agree, Devin. I agree with you on that. I was just actually, I was, literally, I was just talking about that. How he has, like, I think he's averaging damn near 40 minutes a game right now. Andrew Wiggins to 49 for the Timberwolves. Princess James. <laughs> All right, Ennis Cantor. Why does he look so creepy? Sean Marion, what are you doing? I can't believe the Heat lost to that Mavericks team. What a... Dude, that year, we were supposed to have Lakers Heat in the finals. And then Dirk was like, nah. <laughs> Raid Zagorok to 299 for the Grizzlies. Actually, didn't they get Chris Paul back? So now maybe maybe that'll take uh, some of the burden off of James Harden. I mean, that's another guy that's I want to say is overrated. But I feel, I, feel, I feel like everybody in the world knows James Harden 
cannot defend anybody in the league. Like anybody. Great offensive player, but on defense, he's a liability. I don't like that. Especially when you're a star player. You need to be playing hard on both ends of the floor. You need to be out there competing. James Harden only cares about offense. And you know, and that's that's really also has to do with the coaching. They have a uh, who who's their coach out there? Mike D'Antoni, I think is the coach of the Rockets. All he cares about is just running and gunning. Derek White running and gunning it for the Spurs auto to 99. But yeah, at some point they're gonna have to rest LeBronathan. He's he's just playing stupid minutes. But what really needs to happen, the, the Heat need to get it together. Heat need to get it together. They they've been playing crappy. And we could start tomorrow. When we play the Celtics, we got a chance to snap that uh that winning streak. Rudy Gobert to 189 for the Jazz. I don't think the Heat are playing today, actually. All right, we're down three boxes. And we have seven more to go. Who is playing tonight? What's going on in the, in the sports world? Miami moves up to the number two spot in the college football playoff ranking. Oh, boy. Miami ranked number two. The boys are about to win out. Boys are about to win out. We played Pittsburgh on Friday. And your boy's going to be in here lit with the turnover chain and all. Yeah, pretty much, because it's Miami-Clemson. So one of those teams is going to get knocked off. You know, and, and the way the committee loves Miami, even if we lose and it's a close game, I don't even think we'll get in. Even, even if we lose, we, we definitely got to win. There's a Burger King bowl? <laughs> Ah, uh, right, right. Well, listen, hopefully we can win the ACC championship. We've never done that, which is kind of ridiculous considering the, uh, the history of the, of the UM program. So we won a bowl last year. We won the, uh, the, what was it, the Russell Athletic Bowl last year in Mark Rick's uh, first season as a UM coach. Uh, in his coaching history, he's never won 10 games in a season. This is his first ever 10-win uh, season. So let's see if we can get the man a national championship on top of the national championships he won as a player. I think we could do it, man. You know, with our defense and our offense, you know, as much as people don't really talk about it, but we have an explosive offense. We got a solid running game, athletic receivers that can go out there and get that ball. You know, Miami should be scaring some people. If that Notre Dame game didn't wake anybody up, I guess we're going to have to do it in the national championship.
first things first, we got to take care of business on Friday. And then the ACC Championship. I did not go to the University of Miami. I did get accepted. I just couldn't afford it. Well, I, I refer to all my teams as we. Because I feel like I'm part of the team. I do the same thing with the Heat. I do the same thing with the Dolphins. And the Hurricanes, of course. So I'm part of that team, dog. I'm part of that team. I could not afford to go to school. But I've been a fan of their program since... Since I could, you know, process information. Yeah, I'm not I'm not on the list, Rara. I am not on the list. But you know, ask them about Uncle Jesse and they'll tell you, oh yeah, I know Uncle Jesse. That's that's my guy. Ricky Rubio to forty nine for the Wolves. Still haven't seen anything too crazy, and uh, that's pretty. That's pretty sweet, though. Bill Lambeer for the Pistons, number to forty-nine. Set up the field. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Cause then, what if they put me on the field like they did Rudy? I don't want to do that. Hell no. I quit back in high school. Football, although I love watching it, and playing it was fun until I got a concussion. And that's when I realized, oh no, this is not for me. Nikola Vucevic to 189 for the Magic. You know, I don't know how many of you guys actually played football uh, in your lifetime, but it is, it is, uh... It is rough. Markeith Morris for the Suns with the relic. Like, it takes a special person to play football. I'll say that. You play through high school? Yeah, I, 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 I know, no. After my, and you guys that are, have, are in the room consistently have probably heard this story already. But uh, yeah, once I had that concussion, I played the rest of the season and then I just I just stopped. Uh, what are the symptoms of a concussion? Uh, memory loss. Um, and like sometimes, well, at least for me, uh, I had like a, a pretty decent headache. Ben Simmons with the Core Kings insert. That's pretty sweet. Haven't seen that yet. Well, when I played, I I played uh I played both sides of the ball. Actually, three. I was on special teams, offense, and defense. So, I was on the field, like, damn near all the time. Until one day in practice, one of my teammates decided, hey, I'm going to lay this guy out. Even though he's my teammate, I'm going to lay him out. And he did. Kudos to him. He did. He specialized in knocking me the fuck out. And uh, and thanks to that guy. Because if it was if it wasn't for him, I probably would have kept on playing, made it to the University of Miami, balled out, and then and then made it to the pros, only to suffer a concussion in the pros, and then decide that I don't want to do it anymore. So shout out to that guy. 
Because now I'm doing what I really want to do. And that's breaking these cards, baby. Alright, let's do another box. Yeah, that's that's why I played Ra Ra. Cause I'm a, I was a big dude, and uh, I was pretty athletic. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard the tale of me running a four five four six forty back in high school, which is true. And uh, I played safety. I played middle linebacker. I played defensive end, and I also played running back and tight end yeah how'd you know Devin how'd you know I played linebacker you know and another thing you know here in Miami football is everything bro like football is everything in Miami so if you didn't play football and you were a big boy it's like you said Rara you're pretty much a pussy uh, so me, being a big dude, athletic, I, I just I had to play football. So I did. I gave it a go until I got that concussion, and I just decided this is not for me. And football practice was not fun. Damn, bro, I see you. See, I, I, I wouldn't have done that because I had fun when I was playing football. You know what I mean? I was having fun, and that's why I enjoyed it. Because, you know, I don't do anything unless I'm having a good time doing it. You know what I mean? So it sucks you had to go through that, bro. You know, it's all fun until you get a concussion. Then it's like, oh, shit. Damn, Ra Ra! I could imagine you with your with your little jumpsuit on, or whatever they call that thing, spinning around and around and around, then throwing that thing like twenty feet or whatever. What's uh? How far were you throwing that thing? <laughs> yeah, I tried I, I tried my best to troll you on that. Alright Josh, have a good one. Come back in an hour though. Come hang come hang out with your boy. What is this? Denzel Valentine with a patch for the Bulls. Yeah, for sure I had to build for it like Like, looking back, and like, dude, football was so much fun up until I got hurt. And, I, and you know, I think about it from time to time, and I, I don't regret my decision. You know, I'm not saying, oh, dude, I was, I was fucking the best ever, bro. But I think I was definitely good enough to get into college, paid for, and then possibly get into the pros. But, uh... Yeah, I just, you know, right then and there, 
felt like I was at a crossroads in my life. Like, do you really want to be doing this, man? And then, you know, yeah, you'll make some money. But uh, how much of that money are you going to actually get to enjoy? And especially now with, like, all the CTE stuff that's coming out. You know, I feel like I made the, the right choice. You know, the fact that I don't remember how I got home that day is scary to me. Darren Collison, 299 for the Pacers. You can call me a pussy. That's cool. That's I'm the biggest pussy out here. Can't whoop me, though. This is true. I am involved in pro sports. This is true. I'm still uh, working my way up to being a uh, top five breaker in the world. OG Anunobi to 75 for the Raptors. That's a good guard. That's a good guard. You know, they don't have this, but I feel like if they were to do it, I feel like I would be rookie breaker of the year. What do you guys say? Would you would you guys nominate me? Would you vote for me for rookie breaker of the year if that was like a thing? 299 Jared Allen Nets. Retro series for Paul Westfall. That's a pretty cool card. My man Luke would vote for me. Aw. You know, flattery will get you everywhere. You know what, Ra Ra? Next national, I challenge you to a shot put duel. If you choose to accept. I'm going to toss that thing clear over the mountains, just like Uncle Rico. I can't throw that thing anymore. <laughs> How much did that thing weigh anyway? I want to guess like, what, 10, 15 pounds maybe? Here are your nominees for Breaker of the Year. Representing Miami, Florida, the 305 Cardboard Moses, a.k.a. Uncle Jesse, a.k.a. your favorite breaker's favorite breaker, a.k.a. Cardboard Zeus, a.k.a. Mama, there goes Uncle Jesse, a.k.a. No Relation, a.k.a. Mr. One of One, a.k.a. Juan de Juan. And the winner is Cardboard Moses! Oh my god! Alright, we're halfway done. Count me in on the shot put challenge. A 12 pounds in high school, 16 in college. Huh. I never was into track and field. I, I did not enjoy cardio <sighs> Ken Griffey Jr. was born a day after me? Nice! I didn't know that Oh, well, rah, rah, everybody knows track and field gets all the ladies. <laughs> okay, rah, rah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Were you that dude who did, like, cheerleading and everybody thought he was gay, but you were really, like, super straight and you just, and you did it because you would be the only guy there? Thus increasing your chances to, uh, 
Get some strange. Because I'll be honest, dude. I would always, like, rank on the one dude that was, like, on the spirit squad or whatever. That's, that's what we called it in high school, the, like, the spirit squad. And, like, oh, man, look at that. Man, he's the only guy there. Oh, man, look at him dancing like a little fairy. Oh, this motherfucker's gay, bruh. Graduate high school. Actually meet the guy. Talk some shit. And it turns out the guy is the biggest pimp. Out here getting strange left and right. You know, if I had if I had a time machine, I would change that. You know. Not avoiding that concussion. You know, none of that, no. It would have been to uh, try out for the spirit squad. And then uh, work on my magic finger. My spirit finger. If you know what I'm saying. Well, that's crazy, Rara, Ra, because technically, you know, usually the assholes are pretty popular with the ladies. At least in Miami, they are. Oh, dude, Troy Palomalo. They used to call me Troy Palomalo back in high school. Funny enough. I actually have an autograph of his. Uh, from the year they won the Super Bowl, uh, the year Jerome Bettis retired in the Super Bowl, I think that's the year they played the Seahawks, uh, Troy Palomalu had a uh, Sports Illustrated uh, magazine cover at the time, and uh, one of my mom's friends actually went to the Super Bowl and had him sign for me. And he personalized it everything too, because you know back in the day I had long hair, so they used to call me Palomalu because my hair would like stick outside the helmet, you know. And I played kind of like him, you know. I played safety linebacker, so I'm you know I'm flying all over the field, you know. And I'm a big boy, but you know they used to call me Palomalu like affectionately because you know I look Hawaiian, you know, and you know I was everywhere, so you know you know it was a term of endearment. Although I wasn't really too fond of it at the time, but looking back. Pretty badass nickname. Anyways, so one of my mom's like co-workers or whatever is this huge Steelers fan. And uh, he had, he you know, he had heard about me or whatever. You know? Like, oh, yeah, oh, you're someplace. F you're, oh, that's your son? Blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, yeah, you know. Because uh, he used to coach uh, one of the other schools in our district. So he actually seen me play. So like, oh yeah, you know, oh that kid, you know, he's nice, whatever. And then my mom told him why I quit and all this other shit. So whatever. Anyways, he actually went to the Super Bowl that year, uh, got to meet uh, Palomalu, and I don't know why, for some reason, my name came up in the conversation, and you know, the guy started talking about me to him, and uh, Troy Palomalu was like, oh, you know, that sucks, you know, because of my concussion or whatever. And then he's like, but you know what? Let me get that guy an autograph. So he pulls out the magazine. Troy Palomalu. I'm gonna. I'll bring it in one of these days. He signs it to me, and he's like, "Hey Jesse, blah blah blah. You know the power's in the hair, bro." And then he's like, "Don't give up. You know, follow your dreams or some some tacky shit like that." And then he signed the Troy Palomalu. I cried when I got that thing. Tears of joy. Terrence Ferguson for the Thunder with an auto. No, I didn't really cry. I mean, maybe I did. But it was more so because, I, you know, I just that was really, really cool of him to like, get me an autograph from one of my favorite players. Which uh, I would not admit until now because my, my Dolphin fandom is such that I cannot root for another team. Uh, but now that Palomalo's, you know, retired, I could, you know, I could honestly say... One of my favorite guys to watch. Like like him and Ed Reed 
So much fun to watch. Beefcake. That 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 picture right there is an actual selfie of your boy. Back in high school. Derek Rose for the Knicks to two ninety nine. Yeah, this stuff is not fun. I can only imagine watching it is kind of a kind of a I, mean, I got this Lonzo Ball auto I've been sitting on. Kind of waiting on my boy to uh, start blowing up before I sell that thing. Of who? Of Cartman? Rara? Of that image? <laughs> Beef card! Beefcake Kevin Walker with a patch for the Hornets. I don't know if you guys heard my theory. But like, I don't want to put my boy out there, but I'm going to kind of put him out there. The uh, Zoki right here for the Rockets. Check out that haircut. If you see anybody with that haircut... Turn around and walk the opposite direction. The man's dangerous. Clearly does not care about life. If he's rocking the bowl cut. You know, that's when you've reached that point in your life where you're like, you know what? <sighs> Fuck this. And you just rock the bowl cut. Four boxes left. Well, well, yeah, Devin, that would be the exception to the rule, is if you're actually there in the home of the bowl cuts. But at that point, everybody will have the bowl cut? Well, yeah, Luke, I'm, I'm trying to go a lot faster through it. You know, I'm not sleeving uh, any numbered cards unless they're, like, really low. I'm not sleeving them. I'm only sleeping and top loading the autographs. So that's probably why it's going by a little bit quicker. This one feels a little flat. Look at that. Are there like any basketball games on tonight? Oh, that's right. The Bulls and the Lakers play tonight. That is not going to be a good game. <laughs> Well, who knows? Maybe Lonzo Ball will ball this night. The thing with this Donner says so much base cards, 
so much base cards. Oh, Devin, I'm with you. Uh, but as far as as far as uh, Lonzo being a bust, man, like we still we gotta we gotta give him some time, dude. You know he hasn't even finished his first season. You know what I mean? Like there there is not enough of a sample size for us to be like, yeah, you know the kids the kids a bust. It's just it's his first season, man. I mean, he's, he, in, uh, I've seen interviews of his where people are asking him, like, oh, you know, what's the biggest adjustment you feel like you need to make and things like that. And he's pretty consistent in his answer. You know, he, he says the pace, the pace, the speed is the biggest change, is, is, is his biggest problem right now. And it's evident. You know, once he gets used to the speed, I think he's going to be a solid player. Right, he had a triple double last game when once I think he cut off the fro. Yeah, I wouldn't call him a I wouldn't call him a bust either. I mean, I don't know what people were expecting from him. You know what I mean? Derek White with the RPA for the Spurs, numbered to seventy five. Yeah, I guess people were expecting him to be like fucking LeBron James in his tenth season in his rookie year. Devin, if anything, I feel like he needs he needs to get he needs to get the weights up. I feel like he needs to throw the weights around a little bit more, so he can uh, absorb more contact, so he can get to the rim more and finish once he does get to the rim. Um, but more importantly, he needs to start getting aggressive. You know, I, I watch him play, and he. He just doesn't seem aggressive to me. Miles Turner for the Pacers to 189. Like, I would like to see him attack more. But that's just his play style. I agree with a thousand percent with you. Like, I can name five other rookies in that draft class that were probably more impressive in college than Lonzo. De, you know, De'Aaron Fox to name one. I mean, shit, even Markel Fultz had a better career in college. But yeah, it's like you said, he's a grown boy in a man's league. If anything, he probably should have stayed in, 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 the, in the league a little longer. His daddy is a genius as far as, like, marketing and stuff like that. Big baller brand. You know, if I was Lonzo, though, I would have told my dad a long time ago, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, dude, you're. What are you doing, Pops? You're killing me out here. The youngest one, uh, what's his name, Lamelo? Yeah, I've seen a few highlights of his. He can shoot that rock. But that's about it. Ronnie Hood to turn name for the Jazz, which I guess is the only thing you need, right? We shall see, though. We shall see. We'll put this down there. What do I got? What is this? Why are these cards backward, man? I think Leangelo is going to be the most balling out of all of them. He's going to take this little situation. And he's going to ball out. Nice. Three color patch, number 9 out of 10 for Frank Jackson and the Pelicans. Exactly, Ra Ra. Exactly. That's that's the only saving grace of his for me, in my opinion. Is you know he is doing it for his kids, man. 
You know, I, I, I absolutely love the fact that he's doing that, but the way he's going about it, I'm not a fan of. Nothing there. You know, I need I need to learn more about the balls. Like, that sounded weird. But, like, how did they get that? Like, how did he get the money to start up the Big Baller brand? You know, for, for as long as... And even, like, last year when he was playing at UC Lee and the, and the first time I got to hear Alonzo Ball, he was rocking the Big Baller brand. So, like, this, this, this had to have been a, a thing that he's had going on for a while. I would like to see those books. Like, what, like, where, you, where, are you, where are you at, dog? What those margins looking like, bruh? Like, where your paper stacks at, Lavar? He's doing pretty well for himself. I feel like Mom Dukes made 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 the money in that relationship. He he did a Kickstarter. <laughs> hey y'all, you know I got these shoes. They cost like 20 bucks to make, but I'm going to charge people 600 for it. I'm down. I never even heard of Patreon. So I'm like, what the, f what is that? Big Baller Brand t-shirts are $50? Fuck out of here. Maybe if his logo was dope, but it's not. It's really not. It kind of looks like a knockoff of the Bugatti uh, logo. Really, Paul? That's that's kind of interesting. I might have to start a Patreon. Uh, the Patreon involves you guys helping me get rid of my student loans by donating money to me. I'm about fifty thousand dollars in student loan debt. So if I could get fifty thousand people to donate one dollar to your boy, I'll be in there. <laughs> Stay in your wait. Hold on, bro. That's like an actual shirt. I thought all the big baller brand shirts just had the triple B's on it. Triple B's. That is hilarious. Who would? Maybe two t-shirts at 50. But no. no. You know what? The man's a genius. Like he, he did that and he tailored it to the rich and famous. That's what I'm going to do, Rara. Sammy. For the Celtics with the two color patch. Number to 10. That's nice.
Swoop. The hats are fifteen, sixty dollars. Man, go on with that, man. I wonder if he's actually make at those prices though. He's got like he sells one T-shirt. He's making like buku money. What 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 does it cost to get one T-shirt done? You know the cost of the shirt, the labor, materials, and blah blah blah. How much, how much, well, we're just going to throw a number out there. Let's say it costs like $10 to make that shirt. That's a $40 profit. He sells a couple t-shirts. That boy banking. Now throw in the five $300 slides or, you know, whatever it is that he has too. Like, man. It probably yeah, it probably costs like five dollars to actually make the shirt. So that that guy's that is a hell of a markup, man. The thing with that is like I think he can do it because you know he, he's in a position where he can as far as like he's in the media and all that other stuff, you know what I mean? Julius Randle, one out of ten for the Lakers, nice. I've never seen anybody wear a Triple B shirt down here in Miami either, Paul. What if, like, for every... Like, what if you buy a lot, like, that, that shoe of his or whatever? And what if it, like, comes with a Alonzo Ball autograph? It better. Shit. And it better come with, like, some vouchers to the Bunny Ranch, too. You know, when I do decide to go out there, finally. What, to the Bunny Ranch? Hell yeah, I want to go to the Bunny Ranch. What kind of question is that? Ra ra. I don't need to go there. Why not? Well, then again, I'm sure they have better spots in, in Vegas. It's just, you know, I saw it on HBO, so that's that's all I know. Or was it Showtime? It was, it was one of those. Number 9 out of 10 for the Kings, George Hill with the auto. Really? They have... What? There's Well, first of all, there's nothing... Ain't nothing free, Ra Ra. You and I both know that. Ain't nothing free. The 60-year-olds go there? Good. That way, when I show up, they're going to flock to your boy. They're going to be like, oh, man, who is this mocha latte caramel complexion god that's walking in? And I'm going to be all like, it's Cardboard Mergers, girl. I see you on YouTube. I bought into your breaks on eBay. I'm going to be like, yeah. I'm, buy, I'm about to buy into one of your breaks right now, girl. Yeah, that's, that's how I talk.
Well, listen, Rara, I am approaching that age of 30, man. I'm, I'm, I'm officially 28 years old, and, and I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I'm two years away from being 30. I still live with my mom. I'm nowhere near closer to getting rid of my student loans. I dare say that I am a loser at this point in my life. <laughs> so I could use about all the help I can get. You see, that's the thing, Ra Ra. Like, I, I just want to be so, so balling with it that, like, I don't even got to show. Like, I don't even got to throw no kind of money around. Like, I just want to, I just want to show up and panties drop. You know what I'm saying? All right, Ra Ra. Where, if I go to Vegas, where do I go? Tell me right now, Rara, because I'll plan a trip next year for my birthday. I'm going to Vegas before I turn 30. Well, you always have to do a little work, Rara, you know, always. You always got, you know, and it's usually, you know, a little uh, oral persuasion, if you will. Recruit. <laughs> Recruiting is done at the pool during the day. You set up your nights during the day. Wow, we got a party one day, man. You are you are something else, man. Are you feel me though, Luke? Like I just want to show up and panties drop. That's it. Oh shit, it's Uncle Jesse. Wetness. And I ain't talking about the pool. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, you gotta go with the wing with the wingman. I'm gonna. I want to go with like a group of friends. And in my friend in my friend group, like we have a nice little ragtag crew of rascals. Like it's it's pretty even as far as like the male to female ratio. So I, you know, my best side, side, uh, my, or wingman, I should say, my best wingman is a chick. You know, and, and, uh, I think most guys will agree that, uh, having a girl as a wingman is, uh, infinitely better than having a dude be your wingman. You'd be suspect that the panties drop right away. Well, listen, you don't catch nothing if you uh, if you wear that jimmy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's that was that was my game plan. If I was ever to go to Vegas, like just where the bridesmaids at. Just follow the loud group of girls. Wait to the opportune moment and then strike. Zach Collins to 299 for the Blazers. I'm still going to hit up that bunny ranch. Just for the culture. You know? So I could post on Instagram and be like, yo, I'm at the bunny ranch, dog. And everybody going to be like, oh, snap, he's at the Bunny Ranch, yo. And I'm going to be like, yeah. And then I'm going to run through them bunnies. <laughs> Robin Lopez with an auto for the Bulls. Almost done with this break. And uh, it's approaching an hour. Well, actually, it's past an hour now. It's about an hour and ten minutes. Which is still faster than what I did yesterday. About 20 minutes faster. <laughs> Where it's non-threatening. 
I don't know, man. With my group of friends, we we're just we're the loud group of people that goes around and makes friends. Like I love my friends. Oh, dude, I'm 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 gonna plan that trip. I'm gonna plan that trip, rah rah. Cause that's what me and my homeboy did when we went on a cruise uh, last year. You know, I, I, I wasn't lucky, but uh, I did help my boy out because, you know, that's what friends do. You know, I took one for the team. My boy got some. I ain't getting none, but it's all good. Let's see. Well, I have one of my friends. She's actually pretty hot. She's like a little sister to me, so... Don't see her in that way. She got a fat old booty. I'll just have her shake that thing a couple times. I have to, well, yeah, I mean, I got some cute friends. No, no one to be like, oh, my God, Jesse, how is that your friend? What are you doing? Yeah, I don't have those, those kind of friends because, you know, that's just asking for problems. Well, listen, they're friend zone ladies, but, like, it's a, it's me putting them in the friend zone. You know what I'm saying? Jamal Crawford, 1099 for the Wolves. Listen, there are perks to being in the friend zone. I know this is not a popular statement. It's in a, I know you guys are thinking, like, what? I've never ever heard that. I never thought those words would ever come out of your mouth, Moses. Yeah, they just did. Listen, there are benefits to being in the friend zone. Benefit number one. You're in the friend zone. So no matter what you say or do, you're probably going to remain in that friend zone. Which leads me to number two. Being in the friend zone, she is going to talk to her other friends. Who are going to think, oh, he's not threatening. He's in the friend zone. Until they meet you. Then it's like, oh shit. Why is he in the friend zone? And then she's going to get jealous. Because, you know, you're no longer talking to her. You're talking to her friend. And then she's going to come up to you. And she's going to be all like, why are you talking to her? Blase, blase, blah. You know, she's my friend. I know, but you know. I want to get in there. And then she's going to be all like, so wait, you don't want to be with me anymore? Because, you know, women are territorial. They're territorial creatures. So once you show interest in her friend, then that person that friend zoned you is going to have a little crisis on her hands. Ra Ra, this, this, you are speaking facts. I've put all those tactics into play, and I've been successful a decent percentage. But, like, I'm, I want to put that other tactic into play where, like, I just walk in the room, and, like I said, panties just drop. That's, 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 that's the point I'm trying to get to. And I know how to get there. I just got to get in the gym and work hard and uh, get this six-pack popping. Once I do that, dude, I'm walking everywhere with my shirt off. I'm walking everywhere with my shirt off. Like, let me get sexy? Oh, my God. It's over. It's a wrap. R.I.P. to Uncle, Uncle Jesse. Because he probably died via a venereal disease. Because you know, of all the different strains I'd be getting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The only place I can go by myself and be cool is a card show. <laughs> ah, rah, rah, or a hoot. Well, the next national is going to be in Cleveland, Ohio. 
So, Rara, I'm not sure if you're going to attend that national. But for sure, you'd be the coolest guy there. Why would you go to Vegas by yourself? I could I could have told you that was a bad I could have told you that was a bad idea, Rara. I'm sure even you knew that was a bad idea, but you were just like, uh fuck it. Alright, this is the last box, y'all. We are almost done. You are almost done t uh, listening to me talk bullshit. And if you haven't hit, I hope you're putting your prayers out to the cardboard gods right now. Good luck to you. Let's see what we have here. Ah, it was a layover. Gotcha, Ra Ra. Should have hit up that bunny range. Should have hit up that bunny range, dog. Then again, Ra Ra, I'm sure you had your fun. I, matter of fact, I know you had your fun. You just didn't have as much fun as if the you know the rest of the Ra Ra crew was out there. Patrick Beverly, 299 for the Clippers there. Dude, I wish I knew how to play poker. I need to talk to Bates one of these days and learn how to play poker. Because that guy knows his shit. But did you end up in jail too? Did you have yourself a, a, one of those hangover nights? Where you end up on the roof of a hotel. And Mike Tyson's a uh, tiger somewhere on the prowl. DeJounte Murray to 99 for the Spurs. Devin. So what's Lonzo at right now? Like zero points after that air ball? DeAndre Bembry. With the auto for the Hawks right there. Rara, we gotta go out, me and you, one of these one of these nights, man. We'll get we'll get into some uh, some shenanigans. To 299, Frank Lee Tilakina for the Knicks. So there. I'm going to have to check that game out. Don't know how, but I'll figure it out. Luke Kennard with the relic for the Pistons. You're turning 40 on Thursday? Uh, dude, happy birthday, man. Jamal Murray of the Nuggets at 299. Our birthdays are pretty close to each other. And that is a break. Whew. All right. And better yet, Rara, you don't look it either, man. 
You look like you're at least 55. All right, anyways, recap time. Bambry, Hawks. Lopez, Bulls. Hill, Kings. White, Spurs. Ferguson, Thunder. Anunobi, Raptors. Lambeer, Pistons. White, Spurs. Parker, Bucks. And Thornwell Clippers. Uh, yes, we are, Devin. And that, my friends, was the break. 2017, 18 Donners basketball. Half case. That's a 10-box break, number 7, eBay style. Thank you very much, guys. We'll get it out to you.